Well, we're on the road. We're just passing through Nashville, Tennessee. We're on our way to Indiana, public land, hunt some buck deers. Hopefully, I got Brandon in the car with me. Uh, got big crew coming up here with us. We got my dad, my uncle, my two cousins, Carl, uh, my buddy Kevin, his friend Doc, and my brother Jake. Uh, we're bringing the boat with us. Uh, we got some river access from this property we're going to try to take advantage of. We've hunted this property a couple times. Uh, I think this is my fourth year coming up here. Uh, we've been doing pretty good in the past. I, in, the, in the last three years I've been up here, I've killed two bucks. Uh, Brandon got to put a seatbelt on. I've uh, got that squared away now. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we're going to catch some road action and uh, get some bucks on the ground. What you got there, old son? Let me tell you the secret to killing big bucks. What you got? You gotta eat some tornadoes, son. What, what you calling a tornado? Huh? That's some big buck killing food. <laughs> That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that river, man. That's a big old river. Crossing the Ohio River. We have officially made it to Indiana. Alright, it's November 6th. Uh, just got all set up for the first morning hunt up here in Indiana. Uh, it's pretty late. It's probably about 8 o'clock. Um, we got set up, or, you know, got into the woods pretty late because we wanted to walk in on daylight. And there were a lot of trucks parked at a lot of access points in the areas we wanted to hunt. So it took us a little while to find a spot, but I'm finally set up. It's um, 26 degrees. Um, it's supposed to be warming up throughout the day, though, so, um, looking forward to a good sit. Just got a text from Brandon. He said he already saw a small buck, um, as soon as he got set up, so hopefully they're on the move. I'm, um, I'm sitting on the edge of a, a bed and thicket in this direction. Um, I walked through it year before last and found, found some beds in it, um, it runs north to south. I'm just to the east of it. The wind's out of the east blowing this way. Um, and I've got a real nice deer trail that comes all the way down here. I found two fresh scrapes right back here. And this, this trail right here on the edge of this thicket had rubs all along it. I found about three fresh rubs. So I believe I'm in a good cruising spot and I'm going to sit here for a little while and then maybe do some calling later in the day.
I heard some Jason uh, to the west of me, and uh, I couldn't see what it was, but it was, it was definitely some deer Jason. And I pulled out my grunt call, uh, ripped off a few grunts, and and waited a minute, and then pulled out my my rattle and antlers, and clanked them together a few times, put them up, and I look up, and here comes this. It's actually a nine point. It came out right here, right from the bedding area where I thought they would. And he came out right here, started working his way this way, and he got about right there. And I hadn't drawn back yet. And uh, that, that was going to be my only opening to shoot at him. So I, I shouldn't have done it, but I grunted at him before I drew back. Oh, you know, his head was behind a tree open. I could draw back. And he, he was looking right my way. I couldn't draw back. And then he just kind of, he never saw me. He just kind of eased his way off. And uh, he got some thick stuff. I never had a shot. But he ended up being about 33 yards right there where where he stopped at. Uh, I wish I could do that one over again. But it's day one, so we'll keep trying. All right. It's about one o'clock. These roasted beast and ham sandwiches are where it's at for the whole day sitting. All right, that wraps up my day one hunting here in a public land. Um, still got five, six more days to go. Didn't see anything other than that buck this morning. Um, got a good game plan tomorrow. There was a lot of a lot of hunters out this morning. We had trouble finding property to hunt. I think tomorrow we're going to use the boat to try to get away from the pressure. So um, stay tuned for that. I'm all set up for day two. Um, it's November 7th, about 30 degrees. It just got daylight. Um, got kind of like a southeast wind today. Um, I got a big thick, like reforested area that's I'm thinking is bedding over here to my south. And uh, I'm just set up in kind of some open hardwoods where I could see possibly catch him coming out the bed and do some calling. Um, that buck I saw yesterday, I believe he came into me calling, so I wanted to set up, you know, downwind of the bedding area uh, where I could see a decent bit and, and do a little bit of calling, so that's the plan for today. That wraps up my morning. Um, I did a little rattling and grunting there toward the end of my hunt and um, had two smaller bucks pop out of the bedding area um, about 15 minutes apart from each other. Uh, one was a, had four points on one side and a cow horn on the other and the other one was like a little six point. Um, they ended up going closer to Brandon than they did me. Brandon set up about 100, 150 yards over my shoulder here. Um, he got a pretty good look at both of the deer. But I think for this evening, we're going to go back to the camp, hook up the boat, and uh, go try to find a new area. Dang, that was wild. Um, I didn't have my camera set up because I had just got up in the tree. Um, I got this big slough behind me and it kind of wraps around like this here. And uh, there's another slough on the other side of me. I'm sitting right on a big white oak, white oak ridge right between these two sloughs. And I heard some deer crashing through the water uh, in the other slough and they come running by me about 80 yards to my left. I mean to my right, I'm sorry. They hit this big slough behind me and they started coming right at me. It was a six point uh, chasing a doe, chased it all around my tree three or four times. Uh, it took everything I had in me not to shoot it, but I wasn't able to get in on film, but it was pretty cool. 
So hang in there. It's uh, about 30 minutes till the end of legal. And so uh, hoping a bigger deer comes by. Well, <clears throat> that's going to about wrap up our day two hunt. Uh, had a lot of excitement there in a short amount of time with that buck chasing that dead by me. Uh, I'm freaking surrounded by wood ducks. When I climb out of this tree, they're going to go crazy. Uh, so we'll get back after it tomorrow. Okay, it's day three. It's uh, November 8th in Indiana. It's about 38 degrees this morning. A little cool, but it's going to warm up. Got a little bit of south wind. I've tried something different today. Uh, I'm sitting on a strip row of trees that runs east and west next to about a 10 acre patch of woods um, to my east. And then uh, I've got a big CRP field out here that looks like it's got bedding in it. Um, this way it looks right here. Right here. about 9 30 and i haven't seen a deer um not not too thrilled with the spot uh i'm gonna go back to the truck and uh go get another spot i've been looking at the map about the last half hour uh, i think i've come up with a game plan um so i'm gonna pack up my stuff and get out of this tree and go look at some other stuff all right i'll set up for the uh day three afternoon hunt uh as soon as I got out of the wood this morning, I rode around, checked a couple spots, and uh, ended up in the spot I'm in now. It's, I tried to walk back in here, getting a pinch point between some bedding and a slough, and I ended up going further, found a beaver dam crossing one of these deep sloughs, and had a lot of deer tracks in the beaver dam. Um, it looks like just a big open hardwood flat, but I'm sitting right in the corner of it with the wind in my face. Uh, and the beaver dam's right here about 50 yards to my right, so I'm, I'm hoping I can catch uh, these bucks cruising, checking this big bedding area, but getting them before they cross the beaver dam because I, I feel better about getting a shot on them over here versus on the other side of that slough because the wind was a little wonky for that side, so I'm glad I ended up over here. It's about 12 o'clock, so I got a long way to go, a long way to go till dark, so uh, I'm gonna sit tight and see what happens. So day three, um, just saw two deer this afternoon. Not sure if it was two does or a doe and a spike buck, but I saw one come out running from the bedding area. And then five minutes later, I saw something else running down the same trail with its nose to the ground, but didn't see any horns on it whatsoever. Um, so we're gonna get after him again tomorrow. All right, so the last two days have been kind of a whirlwind. Uh, I was hunting uh, with Brandon um, yesterday morning, which was day three, uh, about 11 o'clock. He, he texted me, said he shot a nice buck, probably 125, 130-inch, maybe a little bit bigger, uh, nine-point. Um, he thought he hit a little bit low, so we got down... We didn't find much blood uh, at the arrow at the at the spot of impact, but we, we started finding good blood shortly thereafter that. And man, we, we tra blood trailed this deer for at least a quarter, maybe even close to a half mile all through a swamp. Um, it was spent the rest of the day looking for the deer, never did find it. Um, so uh, this morning um, at about 6:50, my cousin Brennan shot up. A really really nice 10 point uh, text me so uh, 
we went I went and helped him find it. Uh, we spent me him and his dad spent uh, most of the morning getting that deer out of the woods. Uh, I'll post a picture of it here. So yeah, that was that was a really really good buck. I'm so happy for him. It was his first uh, first buck kill with a bow, and to kill a deer like that on public land is just awesome, man. I was so proud of him. Just so happy. Um, so like I said, it's day four now. It's November 10th. It's about 2:30 in the afternoon. I'm set up in the spot where I was hunting in the afternoon of day three, overlooking this big pond back here, and. Um, set up on the, the white oak ridge uh, i saw a, a small six point chasing a doe back in here two afternoons ago this is only the second time i've been in here so um i'm gonna give him a shot this evening uh, I just made it over here to um, to Jake. Uh, we're gonna go try to find this deer. Oh, tell me what happened, man. man. We got a real tough track job on this one. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was about a 16-yard shot. I saw him early in the hunt. He was skirting along the river and the stick stuff behind me, and he looped around to my east. And it was about 100 yards from me when he was cruising by. I take Shane. I said, man, he's heading towards you. He ran right underneath Shane. <laughs> Got Shane's wind. Started heading back this way. Shane said he's heading back to you. About two or three minutes later, I heard him running, and he got in this hardwood bottom right here, and he was running right along the edge of that thicket, cruising for does, just like they usually do. And he ran right below my tree, and I stopped him. Man, I was shaking. I had trouble getting the pin settled, but when I stopped him, I got the pin settled pretty good, and he didn't go 50 yards. All right, let's go get a look at this thing. Hold him up. Nice Indiana public land. Eight point, baby. I kind of wish I wouldn't have let him walk now. Ain't bad. No, he's Ain't pretty bad. good. He's pretty good. Worry about a short one. 